welcome you all out here to the Sega Lily Plaza. <laughs> Finally, um, it's been, geez, I guess probably 25 years since the concept of an underpass under 13th East has been floated. And it's been about 17, 18 years since the specific design of the Sago Lily Plaza has existed and has been selected. So believe me, having been involved with this for the 17, 18 years, I am so happy that we are here and it is done. I hope you enjoy it. Um, Please feel free to talk to me and talk to others about all the little hidden treasures that are included in this project. It's not just an earthen dam. It's not just a Sega Lily. There are so many other elements to this project that the artist wanted you to discover. Anyhow, I just wanted to uh, take a moment and thank everybody who has been involved with this project, and I know over the 17 years, there's been a lot. I know I'm going to miss a few people. Um, but I want to especially thank the donors for this project. The city really, really stepped up on this project. So thank you very much to the administration, to Lisa Adams for championing. Yeah. To Lisa Adams for being the champion of the funding for this project. Thank you to the county, obviously, for its administration of this project, for managing this project, and for all the time that you've allowed your staff to put into this project. So thank you to the county and Mayor McAdams, Mayor Caroon before him, and people before him, and et cetera, et cetera. It's been that long. So thank you to the city. We've also had uh, a, so many private funders from dollars to thousand dollars to two hundred thousand dollars that went into this project from private foundations and individuals. I want to recognize the Eccles Foundation for their contribution and I especially want to recognize Zeke Dumpke Jr. He has bailed us out on this project probably four times. This project would not be here but for him and his efforts and his willingness to step forward with the funding that we needed to continue down this path. He passed away this last year. It's, uh, it's hard for me to talk about because he's meant so much to me. And uh, anyhow, thank you, Zeke. Uh, for believing in this project, for believing in Pratt, and for believing in me. I can't tell you how many times I'd walk into his office and tell him something, and he'd believe in me and uh, just go forward and do it. Anyhow, let me take a deep breath. We'll give you that. <laughs> so, um, she wasn't able to be here with us, but the, the internationally renowned artist Patricia Johansson who designed this project. She's known around the world so much more than I even know her. She's featured at museums, there are shows, she's a scholar at many renowned universities, she's in books, she's in, she's in films, and this project is also world renowned. So whether you know it or, or not, you have an amazing treasure here that I hope you'll enjoy. This isn't just a dam. This isn't just an art piece. It's so much more. So again, feel free to talk to us. Uh, I also want to recognize Steve Gilbert and Arxidio Design, who um, was the project architect and had to deal hours on end with Pratt, with the county, with Patricia, in helping us all come together. So thank you, Steve Gilbert um, and Arxidio Design. I want to thank uh, uh, Marion D. and Maxine C. Hanks Foundation for the interpretive signs that are around, the banner inside. Thank you for your donations. Thank you to the Dodo Restaurant. Thank you to Williams Company for its continued support of Pratt and our efforts to build an amazing trail and amenity through the community. 
Uh, I want to recognize Lori Bray for all the photography you've uh, taken and helped us uh, put this out in front of people. Sherry Soam for your work with the school children and your work with us. Uh, Lynn Olson, who's not able to be here today, as Pratt seems to be the gnat in the ear of the city and the county, Lynn's that gnat in my ear. And thank you, Lynn, for always pushing us and encouraging us. Thank you, Sally Bearclough, for helping organize this event and serving on the board. Thank you to the Pratt Board for all of your efforts in implementing this trail and putting this trail together. I see so many of you out there. And thank you, Karen. She once was uh, chairing the Pratt Committee. Um, I, like I said, I know I'm going to miss people. Sugar House Park Authority, thank you for believing in us as well and for cooperating with us on putting this community amenity together. And uh, I'm going to get some more time at the end. So while I remember some other people to thank, I'm going to introduce uh, Mayor Biskupski, who again, thank you from your days back at the legislature for supporting the Parley's Trail and our efforts. Mayor Biskupski. Uh, good morning, and thank you for coming out today to help us uh, support and open this amazing project. It is certainly close to my heart, and yes, when I was a legislator, I was working uh, with Pratt, um, and Karen was in the Senate, and I was in the House, and so this goes way back for us. So a very exciting day, and I am honored to see our achievements memorialized uh, through an emphasis on community connection as we celebrate the cultural and economic as well as the educational value of the Sago Lily art installation. I am reminded of the ingenuity and resourcefulness of the Salt Lake City residents who inspire me to do the work I do every single day. The Sago Lily celebrates Salt Lake City's values by bridging appreciation for nature with artistry and creativity and by championing the history of Utah's Native Americans and the journey of our pioneers. The Sago Lily and Hidden Hollow's accessibility to all members of our community represents an interconnectedness which has proven vital to our mission to building a city for everyone. As an environmental art piece, the Sago Lily's design uh, is, it is designed to help heal the landscape from the continuous growth and urbanization of our city. It encapsulates the complexity of our city as both an expansive urban center and a designation for outdoor recreation. Environmental art paves the way for unique outdoor classrooms and opportunities for our students. And the Sago Lily and the draw are surrounded by plantings that contextualize the people that have inhabited the Sugar House area throughout the course of Salt Lake City's rich history. I encourage students and lifelong learners to take advantage of Hidden Hollow's exposure to native plants, animals, trees, and flowers. I want to recognize Patricia jo Johansson for her Sago Lily design, which will enhance the experience of residents and visitors as they walk to and from Sugar House's vibrant shops, restaurants, and their new homes. Thank you to everyone who has dedicated their time to the beautification of our city Sugar House residents are fortunate to have local leaders who are committed to creating a space that will be utilized and appreciated for years to come. So my gratitude to all of you who are standing here before us today who have taken your personal time to help bring this to fruition. Congratulations to you and thank you for your partnership. Thank you again, Mayor Biskupski, for your uh, service to the community. I know it can be a thankless job at times, so thank you so much. You're welcome. <laughs> uh, I next want to introduce, uh, well, first I want to recognize uh, City Councilwoman Amy Fowler. Thank you for being here with us today. 
And I next want to introduce um, Karen Hell. Again, been a champion for decades of the Parley's Trail and of this project. So Karen, thank you. Speaking on behalf of the county. Good morning. Thank you. I'm pleased to um, stand in this morning for Mayor McAdams, who is excited about this project and is sorry he could not join us this morning. But um, but I I have some just seeing these all these people here, people who have worked so hard on this project, really brings back wonderful memories. And for the past 20 years, and from the beginning of this 20-year period, this project has been all about connection. It's connection from Sugar House Park down to Sugar House to Hidden Hollow. It's connection with the students, all these school students who've had so much involved, so much participation in this project. The students from Hawthorne and Sherry Psalm students there uh, working on Hidden Hollow. Colleen Menlove students up at Beacon Heights uh, working on figuring out how we could really get across 13th East and finally ending up with this incredible draw that has been a support um, supported by a community. The connections are there. Um, we've talked about all of the community members who have stepped up to make this happen, um, to provide those connections, to help us connect with each other, to help us connect with nature, to help us connect with our history, and to help us connect with our neighbors. This is really an incredible project of connection. And as Juan has said, um, there are so many hidden treasures. And Patricia Johansson really took in earnest this project and really studied the area. She studied the history. She studied the people here. And she wanted to provide an element of beauty here, an element of wonder, and an element of surprise. And I think we'll all find it here. So thank you to all of you. Thank you to help for your help in providing all these incredible connections. I want to specifically call out Walt Gilmore, who's been the county project lead, and his work, he's, um, we've all come to know each other really well over the past few decades on this project, and he's, he's stuck with it the whole time and has, has been an incredible project lead. Um, I see so many, Suzanne uh, standing here today. I see uh, Zeke Dumke, um, here representing his father. Zeke, thank you so much for your family's interest in this project and too for providing incredible connections in our city. Um, lastly, I want to thank um, Juan Arcelaretta. Juan is up here uh, leading, this, uh, leading this event this morning and he has been here through thick and thin and he's been the one to really um, along with Lynn Olson and, um, and others, really make this project happen and really make the connection happen. So congratulations to all of you, to our community. Thanks to Salt Lake City. Thanks to Salt Lake County. I see Rick Graham standing there. Rick is now with the county. He was an integral part in Salt Lake City, a great supporter of this project. So we have something incredible to enjoy and as Juan said, we have something to be proud of, an internationally uh, respected public art project here right in our own backyard. So please enjoy and, um, and congratulate all of us. Uh, pat yourselves on the back for coming together to provide this wonderful amenity for our community. Thanks. OK, just to wrap up, I, I also want to recognize Andrea uh, Sorensen, where is she? Oh, anyhow, there she is in the back, like always, playing it low key. But thanks for all your work. Uh, looking around the crowd, I also want to recognize a few board members Soren, Rita, Dan Bergenthal. I mean, they're all here. I see Suzanne, Charles. Um, anyhow, thank you all for always, I already, I already recognize you, Sally. Um, but. Uh, Colin, Colin Dumkey, thank you so much. Uh, we can't wait for you to get back on board with us. Um, and I also want to thank the community for your patience. I know that this last closure of the trail to put in this green stem 
may have seen like insignificant to you, but is part of the bigger story. Thank you for your patience. Thank you for your understanding. And I can't wait for you to really grow to appreciate this. this these plants behind us, there's more to the story of these plants behind us. There are seven streams representing the seven canyons. The plants in between were specifically selected because the pioneers who were coming into the valley had crops that they used to sustain themselves. These are potatoes, and they're about ready to harvest. So we'll probably be harvesting these soon. But those are the kind of nuances to this project that I hope you'll spend the time to discover. Over in the canyon side, there's a snake tail. There's a story to the snake tail. How many of you have noticed the snake tail? Anyhow, take the time to really discover this place. I, uh, for Pratt's part, I want to let you know that we continue to press forward with the help of our coalition members, principally the county, the city, South Salt Lake, UDOT, and we are pleased to announce that engineer work and design work is being done right now for a bridge that will go over 900 west and connect to the Provo Jordan River Parkway. <laughs> Months ago when we went out and looked at 900 west with the county and South Salt Lake and Utah, we're like, there's no way we can send people across this trail or across this road. It's too dangerous. So that's Pratt for you. We think outside the box and we're like, well, let's just put in a bridge. Obviously, it's expensive, but you guys are going to love it. It's amazing, and it's going to be safe. So uh, thank you all. Um, I'm sure I'm missing some things, but feel free to come up and talk to us afterwards, and we'd love to talk to you all day about this amazing project. So thank you for being here. Thank you again, Mayor Biskupski, Karen, Amy. Thank you all for your help in completing this project.